The Gross Deutschland Division was one of Germany's most respected combat units, with an absolutely stellar combat reputation by the end of the war. But they started life as a ceremonial unit that was formed in 1921 and did only ceremonial guard duties. Service in this unit was compulsory from hand-picked soldiers from all over Germany's ground forces and training schools, so it tended to have the highest quality of men at, at its disposal. So naturally, as Germany went to war, the Gross Deutschland would transform into a combat unit. The division was active for combat officially from 14th of June 1939, but first combat wasn't seen until the invasion of France in 1940. The Gross Deutschland had one main advantage over fellow infantry regiments. It had been assigned its very own Stug assault guns, which gave it a level of individuality above standard infantry forces. As the invasion of France was launched, the first combat action for the division happened at Sedan, where they easily overpowered French forces through the use of superior modern tactics, and took Sedan with ease. After this first success, the division was split into units, as needed, and used as elite infantry support where the fighting would be the toughest. After France surrendered, the division occupied Alizé and Burgundy, and was used to maintain order. They were then reorganised and expanded to regimental strength. After France, the Gross Deutschland joined the invasion of Yugoslavia, fighting well and directly supporting the capture of Belgrade, specifically a radio station, which they repurposed for German use. In 1941, they redeployed to Warsaw, ready for Operation Barbarossa, the invasion of the USSR. As Barbarossa began, the Gross Deutschland supported the 7th Panzer Division and participated in the encirclement of Minsk, and then began their advance to the Soviet capital, Moscow. On arrival at Jelna, the Gross Deutschland were immediately diverted south to engage Soviet forces at Konotop, Potiri, and Romney, east of Kiev, in brutal fighting, where they held their own. After the Battle of Kiev, they proceeded north again, and in the end of 1941, the regiment was in a defensive position south of the Okol River, where it would then have to defend against the Soviet winter offensive. Heavy losses were taken, and the regiment was almost destroyed, but they gained a reputation for being fierce and efficient troops, which was well-deserved. Well At the beginning of 1942, the regiment continued to fight off Soviet attacks and also conducted anti-partisan duties with great effect, and their reputation was so high that they were further expanded into a mechanised force with its own panzer units designated Panzer Troop GD. The regiment next took part in Operation Case Blue, with the objective to take the town of Baronas, west of Stalingrad. On June 28, 1942, the regiment advanced swiftly, thanks to its armoured and mechanised units, and regularly outran its fuel supplies. This rapid advance broke the Soviet forces, and even with bad weather and at times stiff resistance, did not stop the regiment arriving at the town on July 6. They then took Baronas after a brutal street to street fighting, and bitter resistance. After this success on July 8th, the regiment began their advance towards the Lower Don River, south of Rons. They would then spearhead the advance with 2,500 vehicles and quickly began to suffer fuel issues, which made progress slower than expected and allowed small Soviet cat attacks, but these were then repelled and they were able to cross the Lower Don River on the 22nd of July. On the 1st of August, the regiment was pulled off the line and did not see combat again until September, where they were redeployed to the Rezev Salient west of Moscow. They then faced fierce Soviet attacks in the brutal weather conditions, with it being compared to the muddy fields of combat of World War I, and both sides suffered heavy casualties between the 10th of September to the 31st of December 1942, and the regiment was almost annihilated. Come 1943, after the brutal fighting near Moscow, the regiment was reinforced and it was granted its own Tiger tanks, giving it a considerable firepower upgrade. And in March 1943, the Tiger crews got their first chance to show their abilities and attack the village of Bug und Hau in East Ukraine. With a combined force of the regiment crushed the Soviet forces, sending them into a full rout, and the chase was given, driving the Soviets so far that multiple towns of Zarabjanka, Lezkawa, and Stabazbaki and Sejanka also came into conflict as the Soviet casualties increased tenfold. And thanks to the addition of the Tigers, the regiment performed exceptionally in both offensive and defensive operations in combat around Kharkov. As the 23rd of June 1943 rolled around, the regiment was officially reconstituted as a Panzer Grenadier Division and renamed Panzer Grenadier Division Gross Deutschland. But unlike most Panzer Grenadier Divisions, they were much larger and stronger, which gave a massive tactical advantage and the ability to deal with larger threats with very little support. On the 4th of July 1943, the regiment took part in Operation Citadel, the attempted closing of the pocket at Kursk. The regiment took part in vicious fighting destroying large amounts of Russian tanks and infantry, were also taking losses and by July 18th they were exhausted and were transferred to the centre part of the line. After the carnage at Kursk, the regiment was reinforced again and had more heavy armour added to it and also Goliath radio-controlled explosive carriers added to it. 
From August 1943, the regiment took part in multiple counterattacks against the advancing Red Armies near Orel, and after this retreated behind the Dnieper River by October, and then defended the Kumarachung Bridgehead until the end of 1943 against fierce Soviet attacks. Come 1944, the regiment spent most of their time fighting defensive battles and occasionally launching small raids against the Soviets. This lasted up until April, where they were redeployed and had to defend the Targu Formosa in Romania. They dug in and laid minefields to help harden their position, and on April 26th, the Soviets launched their assault. Spearheaded by over 400 tanks, and over the next four days, 150 Soviet tanks were lost to the German forces. Next, the Grossdeutschland launched a counterattack with three Tigers, which left another 56 Soviet tanks destroyed, but the Soviets were not ready to give up yet, and on the 2nd of May, a major Soviet assault began with an hours long artillery barrage, followed by assault by tank riders. The Soviets penetrated the German lines, and individual tank hunter teams, armed with Panzerfaust and Shreks, were used to destroy the Soviet armour. The regiment were then able to lure the Soviets into an emplaced the Flak 88 field, which resulted in 25 IS-2 heavy tanks being destroyed, and at this point a counterattack was launched which broke the Soviets while they were off balance and caused a general rout of their forces, leading to a German victory in this case. After the major defence, the regiment was pulled off the front and rearmed and rested, and was located at that time in Berlin, where they even took part in the suppression of disloyalists after the attempt on Hitler's life on the 20th of July 1944. In August, they were then sent to bolster Volkstrom units, whose task was to hold back the Soviet summer offensive and to allow other German units to successfully retreat from the Eastern Front. The fighting was fierce, but thanks to the veteran troops of the regiment, the Volkstrom were able to be far more effective than if deployed by themselves and by the end of 1945 the regiment was involved in fighting in and around Memel to hold back the Red Tide and by November 26th they had to retreat by sea to avoid being annihilated. Once at Ayers the regiment had to the Brandenburg Panzer Grenadier Division integrated into it and was armed with brand new armoured personnel carriers and vehicles to prepare it for its next challenges. Then in 1945 they took part in the desperate defence of East Prussia and even attempted to break the siege at Konigsberg to save the besieged German defenders. After more brutal fighting and heavy losses, they had to retreat as they did not want to become Soviet POWs, and they made their way to the rest western lines to surrender to British forces, which they did in May. However, the Guards units of the Grossdeutschland Division fought to the last man at the siege at Berlin. The Grossdeutschlands proved over the war that they were phenomenal fighters, and thanks to their elite quality of infantry and special status allowing for direct army units to be integrated into their forces, they were effective beyond almost all of the German units and they proved themselves to be true warriors of war in my opinion. Hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please like, subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you for watching everyone and have a great night.